Hello, hello. Happy Sunday, everyone. If you're tuning in for the very first time, my name is Kim Dent. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I live in Maryland Heights, Missouri. I love teaching stampers and crafters how to make quick and easy and adorable greeting cards. I also teach in-person classes, so if you're in the St. Louis or surrounding area, I teach classes every month at uh, Zion Lutheran Church in their fellowship hall, which also has a delightful coffee shop called Higher Grounds. Um, we are located at 12075 Dorset Road in Maryland Heights, Missouri. Um, if you're interested in attending an in-person class, I would love to have you join us. The first time you come, you're absolutely free. Uh, the next classes are no Friday, November 17th and Saturday, November 18th. I teach one class on Friday from 6 to 9-ish and two classes on Saturday. The first one begins at 9 a.m. and goes till about noon or a little after and then the second class begins at 1 p.m. and goes to 4.30 or excuse me, 4, 4 ish. <laughs> Sometimes give or take, it just depends. Um, we have a wonderful <clears throat> time. The um, card supplies are neatly organized and cut and ready for you to uh, stamp and assemble. And you go home with five um, adorable greeting cards ready to send out. You also get envelopes. And we also give door prizes every class. So if you're interested, please leave a comment. If you found me on my YouTube channel, Stamping with Kim Dent, please hit the uh, like button. And I would love it if you would subscribe and also hit the notification bell uh, so you know each time that I upload a video. And I also love finding out um, where you're viewing from. This past week, I was um, on cloud nine because I have had viewers this past week. The farthest one, I believe, was from South Africa. And then I've had a bunch from Australia um, and in Canada, all across the United States. So please let me know where you're viewing from. And if you've watched me on the replay, um, whether it's Facebook Live or on YouTube, please just leave a comment and say hello. Hi, Valerie. Oh, I've got a bunch coming in tonight. All right, let me um, sync my laptop. And I've got a bunch of fun stuff to show you tonight. Saturday, we had my, yesterday we had my uh, team meeting. And Vicki Todd, who I think is viewing, did a fantastic job teaching us another um, wonderful, fanciful class. <laughs> Here we go. Facebook, are you giving me fits right now? Oh, thank you, Merv. All right, um, you and I will uh, text back and forth, and I'm glad that you can um, make it. You can either choose 9 a.m. or 1 p.m., and uh, the next November class is Saturday, um, Saturday, November 18th. And I don't know why I'm not sinking to... I wonder if I, oh, here I am. I made it. <laughs> Sorry. This is the part that I just wish I had Rick Dent down here helping me with. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, Valerie. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Who else? When is class? Friday, November 17th and Saturday, November 18th. Um, I normally have my classes on the second Friday and Saturday of every month, but in November, our um, our church holds the most amazing turkey dinner. And if you're in the area, um, I would love to have you join us. Um, the It's just a traditional um, turkey dinner with all the fixings and desserts. Um, and it's on Saturday, or sorry, Sunday, November 12th. Um, from 11 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Um, if you love turkey, oh my goodness, it's so good. So because our church is having that turkey dinner the weekend that I normally would have had stamp classes, I um, moved it forward um, one week. So it's November 17th and 18th. And I will have classes in December. Somebody was asking me that earlier, and I said, yes, I definitely um, am having a December class. I believe it's the, let me look. 
Stephanie, I would love to have you join us, girl. Okay, let me check. I'm gonna give you the date for the December class also. December's classes are Friday the 8th and Saturday the 9th. So if you're interested, can't make November, but you'd like to join us, I know I'll be making some Christmas cards and um, you'll, um, yeah, you'll you'll love it. It's just a, a nice way to um, get together and relax and go home with some really cute cards for Christmas. So, all right, I'm all synced up. I'm going to put my laptop to the side. And I started talking about Vicki Todd. So Vicki in August ta uh, taught a, um, what we call like a fun fold class or a template class. And I've been talking about it all this month about how um, if you start putting templates together, whether you're watching me on my Facebook Live and you follow along and take notes, um, when you put together a sample, it doesn't have to be pretty with all the measurements, um, all the scoring and all the measurements, you put that like into a box and then whenever you want to make a fancy fold or a fun fold card, some people call them, you just pull the template out the sample out of your box and it's ready to go. It is so much easier. I know so many of you like they'll say, you'll say to me, oh, I wanted to you know, watch that video of yours um, like on a gatefold card and I couldn't find it. Facebook now is being, they used to always keep, uh, all of my videos would last forever. But now recently they've told us they're only on Facebook, only to keep going to keep my videos 30 days and then they disappear. So that's why you'll see me talk about my YouTube channel more because YouTube does not delete um, the videos. So um, anyway, back to the template thing. Thank you, Vicki Todd. I was inspired to come home and make two cards from the templates that you taught us yesterday. But before I do that, before I show you the cards that we're gonna make tonight, I'm gonna flip my camera around and I'm gonna show you we swap um, and we, this month, the swap theme was um, Christmas cards, but it was non-traditional colors and you are gonna be blown away. The cards, I'm so proud of my team because they did just such a beautiful job. So hold on one second. I'm gonna flip the uh, camera around and I'm gonna show you my, my swaps from my team. They are gorgeous. So hold on. <laughs> Oops, there's my ceiling. <laughs> oh, I also have a new host code. So if you are placing an order, this probably will be good from now, probably pretty much through the end of November. Um, this is the new code. And if your order is, um, if you're going online and placing an order and it is $149.99, $149.99 or less, please use this code. It helps me out so much. Um, this is my website. If you want to learn more about me or when we hold classes, this is where you'll go. Also, if you want to place an online order, that's not to say that I don't, um, you can always place an order with me. I have, um, lots of my friends, they don't do online. They send, or they do do online, but they just prefer to give me their orders and, um, I place them for them and it can be shipped um, to your house or it can be shipped here to mine, whatever you prefer. So enough of that. Here we go. These are the not Christmas cards that are non-traditional colors. And this one, this one was mine and I'm not going to take any credit for it. <laughs> I changed it just a little bit. Um, this is, oh, I can't remember her name. It's another demonstrator. And this is the, somebody, my mom asked me, this is the One Horse Open Sleigh DSP. Isn't it gorgeous? So I cut this. Um, I want to say it was like three and three fourths by five. I did emboss the join piece. And then I cut out these deer from Grassy Groves. And then you can see that that's the Timber 3D embossing folder. And on the inside... I took even this little scrap. Look how cute that looks. Wishing you a very Merry Christmas. So um, there it's early, early espresso, a pool party, and a little bitty layer of Lost Lagoon right there. Quick and easy and non-traditional colors. I'm usually like a red and green girl. <clears throat> 
but um, I, it was fun seeing all the color combination. This one is from Celine Gearling, gorgeous. And this is Wild Wheat. And that's the snowflake embossing folder that I keep telling you all about that I love so much. Isn't this pretty? This is, um, oh, I think it's called the Saint Nick DSP. Isn't that pretty? And she also used Early Espresso on her card base. Oh, and she embossed, look at those pretty gold. Those are gold um, snowflakes embossed. This one is from my friend Pam Watson. And this is a, isn't that gorgeous? And I want to tell you a tip that she shared with me. This is actually a gift card holder. Do you see where you would tuck the gift card right in there? Isn't that clever? And then I want to tell you something she shared with me. So we had, I think we had 13 girls um, swapping this month, 12 or 13. And Pam shared with me that this DSP, like she was very smart about how she um, layered this. These are just skinny little strips that she's put together. Instead of like having this whole piece She's layered these skinny little strips and then get this, this, this is an active, this is a card with, uh, made with love. Do you see these circles right here? That is cut out of this piece, the ornament hook. Oh, gorgeous, gorgeous. And purple and gold look beautiful together. Hi, April. Let's see, hi, Chris. Hi. Oh, thank you. Thanks. This one is from my friend Patty Waller. This is one of my favorite new colors, which is came back. This is Pretty Peacock. Um, this is from that um, Walk in the Forest. Yeah, Walk in the Forest DSP that I love so much. Hello, Cheryl. Good job, Patty. Isn't that pretty? This one is from B. Cusimano. And that's that shop stamp set, which I'm not sure exactly of the names, but isn't it sweet? Hello, hello. And she said she created this little fancy fold. Well done, B. Hi, Denise. This one is from Brenda Marshall. Isn't this amazing? We are gonna, I'm gonna have to talk to Brenda about finding out how exactly she made this. I am amazed. So, and it looks like, let's see, that's Calypso Coral. This might be Blushing Bride. And then that's one of our embossing folders with some rhinestones. Gorgeousness. This one is from Kelly to Shannon. And this one just makes me smile. You know, I'm a pink girl. And I love, this is the Mary, uh, Mary, mm, Mary and Bright, Mary Bright and Bold. DSP that I've used uh, recently. But look at those colors. Granny Apple Green. I believe that's Melon Mambo. Blueberry Bushel. Isn't that fun? And it says, hoping your home is filled with the spirit of the season. And look at, and then the snowflake, that's from the mini catalog also. This one, here comes Vicki Todd's. Uh, I don't know the name of it, but I think this is beautiful. <laughs> I recognize this. Merry Christmas is from the Berry Cute. I think, Vicki, you're watching. What's the name of this um, owl set? And then I want to show everyone because it's so cool. A lot of people thought this was torn DSP. This is actually, this part was masked. She tore paper and then she covered it up, and then she, oh, thank you. Thanks, Vicki. Courtesy of M Michelle Zindorf, another amazing demonstrator. And then she masked it and then stamped, and and I'm assume um, blended, and then pulled that away, and it looks like beautiful DSP. And look how I love it. The, the owl is just beautiful. Oh, so pretty. This one is from Roberta Layton. This is Blushing Bride and Night of Navy, and she used an acetate. Um, this is, Roberta, can you help me out? Is this a, that's an acetate piece, and then she layered these pieces, and I believe that D DSP is Shining Brightly. I love the font on this, celebrating the magic of the season, wishing the best and bright holiday season. Isn't that pretty? And then some rhinestones. And then Lynn Zerby. That is, this is mm, so good. This is, let me see. I'm pulling out her notes here. Um, the 
Distress Tile 3D Embossing Folder. And then the dies are the handcrafted elements. The, girls, this is in the mini catalog. And then she used um, rose gold um, specialty paper. And what else? Iridescent rhinestones and pastel adhesive back sequins. Look how beautiful that is. Non-traditional colors. And then the last one, this is from Vicki Fuse. She might be watching. She's done a Joy Fold card with um, the Walk in the Forest DSP and the Berry Cute. And then that's embossed. I'm not sure what embossing folder is back there, but good job. I hope you enjoy watching uh, or looking at the um, swaps as much as I enjoy get receiving them. It's always fun to um, get a whole stack of cards. It's something we do with my team every month. And um, if you're interested, oh, that reminds me. So we have just a couple more days left of our um, joining promotion. It's the 35th anniversary of Stampin' Up! And the promotion that's going on is amazing. You can either choose 35% off the cost of your starter kit, which would bring it to $64.35, and you get to choose $125 worth of product, the product of your choice. And then that kit ships for free. And then you get to be a part of my team, which is amazing. I say to all the girls, if you come to my stamp classes, they're a ton of fun, but you can... Um, if you come to my team meetings, they're just uh, so good. Every month we meet on the fourth Saturday of the month. The other option is you can choose 35% more. And so you for $99, you choose $168.75 in product of your choice. It also ships for free. And then the other thing that Stampin' Up! is doing is we have a free virtual event on November 11th. And that's a $77 value. You would also get to uh, to do that, attend it virtually um, for signing up. This ends on October 31st. So if you're interested, please contact me. I would love to have you on my team. All right. The two cards that I um, am making today were inspired by Vicki Todd and her template class yesterday. So... Vicki, I hope I'm going to do you proud. So this uh, this is the template that uh, we made, one of them. And I want to say this is maybe called a Z-Fold card. I'm not positive. Let me get my laptop out of the way. Um, this is a card that stands up like this. Can you all see that? And like I said earlier about the um, templates, this is not meant to be a pretty card. It's meant to be a pattern or a template for me to pull out, which is what I did this afternoon. Um, and it made it so easy to create this card. So there's my template with all my directions, my scoring. This is going in my box. We did three different ones yesterday, thanks to Vicki. And this is the card that I'm gonna show you right now how to make. So let me pull out the kit. I'm gonna set my, my little template to the side. So for, for this card, whoops, well, I'm losing pieces, girl. You're gonna need a pack of the One Horse Open Sleigh DSP. And in that pack, there are two sheets that look like this. I love, love, love Oh, hi, Lisa. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, now I'm distracted. distracted. Um, yeah, thank you. I the, We've had three weeks of little baby Vera, and it's been nothing but pure joy for the three weeks that she's been here on Earth. So um, thank you. All right, back to this. One Horse Open Sleigh. This is a um, pattern that I, I, think I've, I, I think I've ordered. This is probably like my fifth pack of the One Horse Open Sleigh, and this piece is one of my very favorites in it. And you can see that I used it back here for this back panel, and then I also used this one. And I've cut it down, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. So you need the One Horse Open Sleigh, then you need a piece of Mossy Meadow. This is your card base, 
and it is four and one fourth by 11 and it's scored at two and three fourths and five and a half. And then you need a skinny piece of mossy meadow for the band or this band, the skinny band that's in the front, this band. Um, and this is one and one fourth by 11 and it's scored at five and a half and eight and one fourth. And then for the little deer that is from, I started saying, this is from Grassy Grove, the Grassy Grove dies. They coordinate with this set and the dies are delightful. Um, so the, the two little deer dies, the, I guess we'll call it the mama deer and the baby deer. This is what I used. So that piece is two and a half by three, or you could use a scrap. You really don't have to cut a piece out. And then this is, I'm gonna show you how to cut it because it can be kind of confusing, but there's that back panel. That's four inches by five and one fourth. You need a piece, this is uh, one by five and one fourth, and that's gonna go across this skinny piece right here. You need two little pieces of DSP, and this is all, there. it's all one horse open sleigh, one by two and a half, and they're gonna go here. You need two of those. And then you need a piece of basic white. This is for your back panel, three and three fourths by five. And then you need two pieces. This is two and a half by four. And then this little piece is a cute little piece that we're gonna put on the back side. Right there, look at it. Look at how cute that makes that. I always think of my friend Valerie when she tells me, got, well actually this isn't the inside, but the inside needs to be as cute as the outside. So that's what this little scrap is from right there. And that's one inches by three and three fourths. So I'm gonna set all these aside. And normally I, um, Normally, I would do, I would show you the cutting and the scoring. I think tonight, because I've been gabbing so much, I just want to go over this card base is four and one fourth by 11, and then it's scored at two and three fourths by five and a half. So these score marks right here, two and three fourths and five and a half, and I used my scoreboard for it. So I'm going to set that aside. <clears throat> I am going to bring in my trimmer right now because I wanna show you how easy it is to cut the pieces for um, the panels and how I did it. I know um, Sandy, sometimes, Sandy Amen, she's usually on here, she watches and she'll say, you know, like the seam paper like this, she said, I have a hard time figuring out how, um, you know, how to make it fit like within a card. And I'm gonna show you exactly what I did. So on the piece with the two little cabins, let's see. I just cut off, let me see, I gotta get it all in my camera. Pull up that a little bit, scoot that forward. Okay, here, you can see me. This is, I'm gonna cut off one inch off of the bottom. So I'm gonna use my uh, cutting blade, set this aside. And then I'm gonna cut off, see how I flipped that DSP? I'm gonna cut off one inch off the top. And I'm gonna set that aside because I'm gonna use that. And then this panel is still too big. I need it to be, um, right now it is six inches and I need it to be five and one fourth. So with this, I you know kind of messed with it. Did I wanna cut off um, you know, the trees here, <clears throat> or did I decide to do the trees? It really didn't matter too much. So I just chose to chop off. We're going to cut off, um, from six inches to five and one fourth. You could use that little piece. I didn't use it. I used another piece, um, on this second piece of DSP. So there's that. That's your back panel that is four by five and one quarter. And then this long skinny piece 
it's one inches by, right now it's one by six. We need to make it five and one fourth also. Oops. So there's no right or wrong. I just, uh, you know, I kind of sat here and played with it and I did have some boo-boo, so don't feel like. The one thing that you can do if you have vellum, if you can make a template with your vellum, and then you can kind of lay it over to see where, you know, where you want it to line up, what part of the scenery you want to show, and then you just go from there, cut off, you know, either side and the top and the bottom. And then on this, it worked out really cool because, there's Sandy, um, you're afraid, you're afraid to, oh, don't be afraid. It's just paper. For this piece, I, I used it for these two little panels. Now I would have, I'll be honest with you. I wish I could have had like a con continuation of like this pattern and I didn't, but I didn't want it to go to waste and I didn't want to, um, pick another a piece of, I didn't want to chop into another piece of DSP. So these, this piece right here became these two right here, which are one inch by two and a half. So let me get that out of the way. They're already at one, because remember we cut one inch off. So I just need to make those two and a half. And one of these pieces, this is the piece that I stamped on. Joy and peace. All right, let's see. This piece is these two panels right here, and they are, let me get my little template, they are two and a half inches by four. So for this one, let's see, how did I do it? Oh, give me a minute, girls. I did, hmm, hmm, hmm. I did four, no, let's see, I must have cut one, one inch off, up, one inch off the top. Yeah, that's how I did it. One inch, again, one inch, no, let's see, one inch off the top. I must have cut two inches off the top. Sorry, girls, let's do one more. So make that two inches off the top of this. Yeah, so that gives us the four. So this is now four four inches tall, that's what it is, it's two inches off of the top. And then I slid this in, and this is gonna be two and a half. And then this is gonna be two and a half. And then there you can see where I got my little piece for the back panel, which I need it to be three and three fours. So there's my little back panel piece. So now I've got double pieces. You can tell I'm gonna make a couple of these cards for Christmas. So here we go. This is how easy it's gonna to come together. We're gonna bring in the card base, four and one fourth by 11, scored at two and three fourths by five and a half. And I'm gonna bring in my stamp and seal. And I'm gonna do my back panel first. all my little sticky notes. Today, if you live in Missouri, was a good day to stay inside and stamp. Oh, it's such a dreary, dreary day today. Did anybody else get some stamping done? I hope so. So there's my three panels. You wanna put those on first, and now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in, here's the band, and I, it's a one and one fourth inch by 11. It's scored at five and a half and eight and one fourth. And so I'm gonna pull off my little, and Vicki did a great job yesterday. Let's see how it goes like this. And I just kind of position this, you know, like where I wanted it. Um, to go, I want it, the deer to be kind of centered so it kind of looks like they're looking at the scenery. So I'm gonna take my snail adhesive. Thanks, Lisa. I was always afraid to make this card. And so thanks to Vicki, this, this card always looked too hard for me. Now Vicki said, fold it up just like this, like that. 
And then I'm gonna add a little bit of heat adhesive on this, whoops, oh my goodness, my little yellow notes are all over the place, onto this side. And then I'm so right here, see my adhesive? I'm just gonna fold it over. Dun, 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 dun. Isn't that pretty? Oh, thanks, Shirley. Okay, here we go with the last little bit we're gonna do. I just love how the, really, it's girls the paper that did all the work for this, you know. There's just one little piece of stamping, which I haven't talked about that yet. Um, let's see, here's my two little pieces. The, these are the two pieces that I kind of wish it would look more snowy, but then I was like, you know, don't, I was stressing over it. I'm like, it's a card, Kim. I got to remind myself. It's a card. So this is the piece we're going to stamp peace and joy on. And let me do this. I use the set, which is oh, divine. This is out of the holiday, uh, the, I'm sorry, the September, woo, September through December mini catalog. Gorgeous. If you like faith-based cards for Christmas, especially girls, you got to get yourself Night Divine, Joy and Peace, The Lord is My Shepherd, which can be used, you know, we can use that for other cards, Glory to God in the Highest, O Holy Night, and then He Shall Be Called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace, and the stars are brightly shining. But look how sweet and simple this Joy and Peace. So that's the one we're going to use right now. And I'm going to bring in Lost Lagoon. And just, just a sweet and simple little card. But it's a fancy fold card, so it looks like I did a lot of work on it. But it was really so easy, thanks to Vicki and her amazing... Oh, that's a little low. That's okay. I'm going to go with it. That's a little bit low, but that's all right. I'm going with it. So that is gonna go on this second or this yeah this second little piece right here let me pull it back into the screen joy and peace and I just am gonna make an even border you know all the way around so the mossy meadow pops and then I'm gonna bring in my back panel and this stamp set that I'm using is called joy to you it's in the mini catalog um, I love the words. This one that I chose for this card is wishing you a very Merry Christmas. But peace and joy to you and yours. That's sweet also. All of these are really nice. Um, I just thought this was a quick... I, it was sit, actually sitting out here on my desk because I used it on my swap. So that's how, that's how joy to you came about. So for my card, I'm going to stamp... I made a back panel. I'm going to stamp it right here. And then I'm going to close up Lost Lagoon and I'm going to get one at that little bitty. Did I do that right? Yep. Yeah. This is going to go on the back side of the card. So if you like to write a little note, you know, or just to sign your card, I thought this was a sweet way to do it. Isn't that sweet? There we go. And then the last thing we need to do is bring in our mama deer and our little baby. <laughs> and let's see. They're going to go. Now, I'm not going to. Let's actually what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bit of my uh, stamp and seal. But probably, girls, if I was making a bunch of these, I would use my Tombow glue. Or, you know what else you could use? Your adhesive sheets, which I've got one right here. I should have cut it out. Our adhesive sheets are amazing. What I would have done is, this is like a, <laughs> it's kind of like fly trap paper, I think you would call it. See how there's adhesive on there? This, I would peel this off, put it on the back of the cardstock, and then um, the early espresso cardstock, and then put the dies on top of it, run it through, and it becomes like a sticker. So 
that probably is the smartest way to do this, but for time's sake, we're just gonna use a little bit of stamp and seal. Dun da da dum. Let me close that in. See, the colors. I wish they. You know, I think they're a lot prettier in person. Um, I can look. I'm watching my big screen, and mossy meadow kind of looks really dark. But I, mossy meadow is one of my favorite colors, Stampin' Up colors, especially um, for the greens. It's probably the one that I use the most. So that mossy meadow against the Lost Lagoon and the pool party, and then a little bit of early espresso. So I hope you like it and I hope you'll be inspired to make a template. If you need help with this template, just let me know and um, I'm happy to go over the directions, but you can see like, it's just, uh, you know, nothing fancy. You can see I made some boo-boos on there, but wow, was it easy to pull out. Thank you, Vicki. Oh, thanks so much, Vicki. Um, it was e so easy to pull this out this afternoon and whip up this card. So be inspired to do that. The next card, same thing. It's one of Vicki's uh, templates she taught us yesterday. And <clears throat> it is not a Christmas card. <laughs> Oops. Let me get my chamois out here. I'm going to clean off my stamps. Oh, Joyce. I, I told mom yesterday when I showed her my card um, for the swap, I said Joyce would like this card because it's got the deer on it. Joyce, maybe you'll get one for, I bet you will, for Christmas. Get, watch for one to come to your mailbox. All right. <clears throat> this one, thank you, Tori. Thank you, thank you. All right. This card was inspired by this template. And this is, I'm not sure what we'll call it, but I like it because it's got a belly band. So this card is, um, it's a piece of five and a half by 11. That's the card base. And you score it at one and one fourth, three and three eighths, and then you flip it or you turn it and turn it, do one and one fourth and three and three eighths again. So, um, and then let's see, this belly band, well, I'm gonna go through, this is a one by 10. So I'm gonna show you that. And then these pieces are one by five and one fourth and one and seven eighths by five and one fourth. And then your inside piece is four by five and one fourth. I'm gonna pull out my kit though to show you. Oh, first off, first I'll show you the card. <laughs> so this is the card. I need some thank you notes. And I just was inspired by my sweet little granddaughter. We've got some, we've got a um, new little grandbaby Vera Kimberly and I, I'm in love with her and I'm also in love with pink. So I needed some thank you, thank you cards. And I pulled out, it's a pack of DSP called, let's see. <laughs> it is called, <laughs> Delightfully Eclectic. And it is in the annual catalog. Thanks, Lisa. It's in the annual catalog. It's very different paper. It's like, a. it's definitely eclectic. It's 48 sheets. You can find it on page 129 of the annual catalog. And it's a, it's a big pack. It's $30 for, for the, the big pack of 48 sheets. So um, here's your, here's your kit. And let's see if. I'm gonna show you, so here's the card base. I chose Mossy Meadow, it was sitting here. I just decided it looked well because I was pulling from the colors that are in the leaves of these little flowers. Um, so Mossy Meadow, five and a half by 11, score it, and I said this earlier, you score it at one and one fourth and three and three eighths. So I put it in my scoreboard and I scored it one and one fourth three and three eighths. And then what I mean by flip it is I turned it around and I did it again on the opposite side. So that's how you get this kind of gatefold 
going on. Um, very easy to do. And then the belly band is 10 inches long by one inch. And I'll show you a quick and easy way that Vicki taught us how to do the belly band. All right, the other panels are, here we go, delightfully eclectic, one and seven eighth by five and one fourth, and you can use either two of them. So I could have two, you could do two or four. I love the paper and I've got a lot of it, so I'm gonna choose to do four panels. So some people leave these two panels empty, like I could have the green showing, the mossy meadow showing, but I'm gonna use four panels of the one and seven eighth by five and one fourth. So four of those. And then two pieces of one by five and one fourth. These are the pieces that are gonna go right here. And then you need, I use bubble bath for the deckled circle die. That's three and three fourths by three and three fourths. And then the mossy meadow for the, I use the dainty delight dies. And that's what this is right here. So the dainty delight dies. This is two and one fourth by six. And for those little bitty flowers that are on there, two by three, but again, girls, use your scraps. And then a piece of uh, basic white. This is um, three by three, that's for this deckled circle. And then for the inside, oops, I don't wanna lose those little flowers. Four by five and one fourth. So, Again, another easy card. Make yourself the template and watch how quick and easy it comes together. And if you need help, just give me a shout. I'm happy to um, happy to help you out there. So for the, um, I'm gonna start assembling on the outside, delightfully eclectic. Take a look at it, girls. It's really cool paper. All sorts of different patterns. And my girl Kelly, she's a, she loves green too, so I know she would like this. Mossy Meadow, I bet, is right up her alley. So there's our front little panel. Then we're gonna take our um, bigger panel, panels, one and seven eighths by five and one fourth. Aw, oh, April, thank you so much. <laughs> Um, and this was really hard because I am a pink and a flower girl, but I wanted to break it up. So that's how, that's why I'm using the stripe. So that one is going to go here and <laughs> one on this side. And then I couldn't decide if I wanted like flowers for the inside. I did end up going with the stripe again. I don't know why, but both sides would look really, you know, really pretty. I just thought it would be fun to put in, put in the stripes and just leave the little flower DSP for the front panel panels. Okay. All right, let's set these aside. Now I've already done some of the work for you, so you don't have to watch me cut out. So for, this is our little deckled circle die. Those are in also in the September through December um, mini catalog. I'm thrilled that we've got some more circles back in our line. Oh, here I showed up. There's the large one, that's for the pink bubble bath. And then this one was for the white. So, aren't they sweet? I kind of in the beginning was like, mm, I don't know about the deck, you know, is it gonna look too rough? But like when you see it against the white, you know, it doesn't like look too rough. It just looks like it's, you know, got a pretty little pattern on it. So these are the deckled circle dies. You can find them in the September through December um, catalog. And before I glue, I'm gonna stamp and I'm gonna bring in 
<clears throat> so I knew I wanted to make a thank you card, and so I just went through the catalog and found, this one was perfect, a heartfelt thank you. So I knew I was gonna put this on, thank you, Jan, um, on the front. Now one, and then I'm gonna, I decided, I was gonna use Mossy Meadow. <laughs> Because, girls, like, you want it to, sometimes, like, when we're stamping, we think, oh, we've got to use all the colors. But when you keep to, like, two and three, three colors, four colors, you know, so as far as, like, the whole thing. So we've got some green going on. We've got the bubble bath. So that's how I chose, I actually chose Mossy Meadow because bubble bath would be too light. And I didn't want to use black. So I did decide, you can see how on this one, it's kind of low. I'm gonna see what it looks like if we move it up a little higher. So a heartfelt thank you. I hope, hope this is gonna work. And then while we've got my um, Mossy Meadow um, ink pad out, I'm gonna set this to the side and I'm gonna show you, this is a new stamp set, hope you know. Um, and I've just started using it, so I'm bringing in, this is a great one, but this is just saying thank you doesn't seem like enough. Hope you know how much your kindness is appreciated. That is such a great verse, and I'm, I'm thrilled that I can, it, it's like, it just says everything. I'm not good at writing. That's not one of my gifts. Words are not one of my gifts. Um, so I love it when a stamp says exactly what I want to say. So, mm, so good, so, so good. All right, close that up and Nature's Prints, this is also in the annual catalog. Okay, we're gonna glue this on the inside. And I get to set these to the side. So here are my little flowers and I don't think I said this, the dye for the, the greenery and I think I did say it dainty delights I've used this before if you like flowers if you like die cutting get yourself dainty delights so that is how I I created this little sprig right here and I was gonna say where's my sprig here it is there's isn't that pretty so I'm gonna set the card aside and I'm gonna show you what I did. I originally thought I was gonna use this top piece of the um, sprig, we'll call it. And then I decided to use the bottom part because I wanted this little, I don't know, I'm being silly, but I wanted this to show instead of the top part. So I'm actually gonna take it and snip it right here. I think that's where I went. Let's see. No, it's down. Mm. Trying to see where I cut it from. I guess I cut it from right here. Dun da da da. And then I cut out my little flowers out of bubble bath. Watch this. Now I'm normally, girl, and I've got it right here, but for time's sake, because I know I gab so much, I'm just gonna take, no, I glued it on the vine, on the sprig. I just took a little teeny tiny dot of glue. This is when you're creating on the fly. Okay, come on, girl. Don't explode. You know, as soon as I press real hard, you know what's gonna happen. Where's another bottle of this? Well, and there's some, is it clogged? Oh, and I even have from my friend Gina, I've got a needle here. Let's see if that works. Hold on one second. I was gonna say, I have my silicone craft mat. No, it's not coming. Let's see if this works. My friend Gina gave me this. It's like a hat pin and you stick it down in your glue bottles like that. Isn't that cool? I don't know where she came up with that idea, but I love it. And it sits here for time like times like these when I am on the spot with a Facebook Live. There we go, there we go, okay. Really girls, what I should have done is pulled out my silicone craft mat and sat it down, but I'm just, 
being crazy tonight. All right, here's this one. Ooh, that's a big, big dot. Does anybody else do this? <laughs> oh, thank you. Thanks. <laughs> thank you, Valerie. That's very kind of you. I feel like I'm going a mile a minute tonight. But I had so much good stuff to show you. Okay, grab this up here. I love the colors on this. You're a pink girl. This is so good. All right. I should, here, bring in my take your pick. Or not. Oh, come on. I need it to, there we go. And I decided, do you see on the pattern how this, um, little flower it's got like kind of I'm not sure what color it is to me it almost looks like Cajun craze but I didn't want to put Cajun craze on my I don't know I wanted I didn't want to make my pearls Cajun craze so I actually brought in um, the dark cherry cobbler and I think it turned out okay so my iridescent pearls I'm gonna color them with our, out. this is an alcohol marker, and I'm gonna take the bullet point end. I love these pearls, they're so good. And I love matching, so you're gonna, oh, let's see, bullet point. So if you ever want like embellishments to match, all you have to do is get yourself some blends and then with our rhinestones or with um, these pearls, with our, I know I'm not sure. I'm trying to think, do people use this on ribbon or not? Do any of you use blends, alcohol markers on your, to like color white ribbon? Let me know, let me know in the comments. <laughs> I know back in the day, like if we wanted to color our ribbon, we used to, um, we used to take it and take the take our um, ribbon over an ink pad and like kind of draw it through the ink pad. Yes, you do. Oh, yay! I was not sure about that. You know what? Here, I put my glue away, and I need to add a bit of glue on the back of it. So it just takes a little. We have a preschool at um, Zion. And, and and I also teach Sunday school, and I'm sure you all know where I'm going with this. Our last week we did a craft at, in Sunday school, and I had bought like these brand new Elmer's glue bottles, you know? Oh my goodness. <laughs> you know, I like the entire time, I just felt like I was saying the whole time, you know, just a little dot, just a little dot. <laughs> but it all turned out cute. It was a cute project, but if, you know, with little kids, I think it's, I'm thinking more of my Sunday school that it, you know, you're like trying to teach little ones how they just need a dot of that glue. And I just realized I got glue on here. This is um, an adhesive remover. This is actually um, a stamper, a customer of mine got a hold of a whole bunch of these from the dollar store. And I just realized I'm out of the camera. So um, I think way back in the day we used to sell these, but she found them at, um, yeah, at the dollar store. So when you get, like, did you see I had that little bit of um, Tombow glue right there for my finger? Um, this does the work. It takes that, pulls that adhesive right off. So dollar store, dollar store. All right, I'm gonna pull in my um, beautiful little pearls just to give it a little bit of pop oh and then I already let's see this is the first time I'm using I already did it but I want to show you this is the she I have no idea what looks like night of navy sheer ribbon combo pack look at how pretty this ribbon is this is in the annual catalog dot dot I'll, I will have to remember that Lisa dot dot not a lot <laughs> this ribbon is so pretty look how gorgeous it coordinates with um, 
all the 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 bubble bath and then this looks like um, azure afternoon and this is lemon lolly and it's got a little bitty streak of little bitty thread of silver going through all of it so I already tied the bow because I thought it needed a little something something I'm gonna bring in my glue dots and then I'm going to show you a real easy way to make a belly band. Okay, let's set that right there. Oh, so pretty. So, so pretty. <laughs> All right, for the belly band, let me get these guys <clears throat> set to the side and the glue dots. So for the belly band, it was one inch by 10 inches. Okay. And all you do, the easiest way, like back in the day, we used, I used to try to cut and score. This is the best way to do it. Oh my goodness, I hope, well, there you go. Um, all you do is you take your belly band and kind of, I've centered it, and I'm gonna just kind of give it a nice little crease, but not too tight, and do the same thing on the other side. And then I'm gonna bring in my stamp and seal. Or you could use tear and tape. Dun da da dun. That is the best way to make a belly band. Now all I have to do is add a little bit of adhesive right there in the center. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Thank you, thank you everyone. Let me flip my camera around. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, I know I went really, really fast tonight. Um, if you have any questions about either of the fancy fold or fun fold cards, please just comment or uh, leave me, um, a, give me a text if you've got my number or send me an email. I'd be happy to help you out. Um, I appreciate all of you. Have a wonderful week. God's blessings. Bye-bye. Thanks so much.